Subhanallah. Rabbi said, the promise of Allah is Jannah for those who die fighting and victory for those who remain behind. Jannah for those who die fighting and victory for those who remain behind. And then Rustam asked him, he said, tell me, are you their leader? And Rabbi radiallahu anhu said, no, I'm not their leader. I am the lowest from amongst them. But the believers are like one body. The believers are like one body. The high assists the low and the low assists the high. And he was expounding upon the words of the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-mu'minuna ka jasadin wahid. That the believers are like one body. If the head hurts, the entire body feels a source of discomfort. And if the eyes hurt, the entire body feels uneasy. And you know, often you hear Westerners saying, why is, what's wrong with these Muslims? Why are they so hung up about Chechnya, about Palestine, about Iraq? The reason is because their suffering is our suffering. Their pain is our pain. And because you turn your back upon them, that doesn't mean we are going to turn the back on our brethren. You know, when Israel was created, the entire pop, out of the entire population of Palestine, 22% were Christian Arabs. And today, only 2% remain. There are more Palestinian Christians in Sydney than there are in Palestine. Why? Because Christendom turned their backs on their brethren. The first suicide bomber of the Intifada was a Christian. He was a Christian. And are ah, they suffering for the Muslims? Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ defined us al mu'minuna ka rajulin wahid, ka jasadin wahid. The believers are like one body. They pain, we pain. But the reality is that the believers are such that they side with the oppressed no matter who they may be. You look at this Norman Kemba situation from Hezbollah to the Ikhwan, from Hamas to Islamic jih Jihad, all of them have pleaded for his release. Every single one. And then Rustam, he went back to his cronies and he had a council with them. And he said, have you ever seen a man who is more articulate and more confident than this man? Who was he speaking about? He was speaking about Rabbi radiallahu anhu who had spent his entire life in bondage. He had no PhD from Harvard, but he was man who Allah loved. And the Prophet sallallahu said, when Allah loves a person, then he becomes the ears by which he listens. He becomes the eyes by which he sees. He becomes the mouth by which he speaks. He becomes the hand by which he grasps. He becomes the feet by which he walks. And when then this happens, when you become one with Allah, then nothing can defeat you. Nothing can overpower you. And this is what the state that these people have reached. And this is why the believers need to make Allah theirs. Why? Because if you make Allah yours, if you make just Allah yours, then everything around you becomes yours. Because everything belongs to Allah. And if you lose Allah, then you lose everything. You lose everything. And the Rustam, he wanted to broker a deal with the Muslims because Rustam had seen a dream that the angel had descended and it had taken, it had taken the weapons from the hands of the Persians and he had given it to the Muslims. And he wanted to broker a deal. But his men around him insisted upon fighting. His cronies insisted that they fight and then a battle ensued and the battle raged for five days. 32,000 men were taking the superpower of the day on. Over a hundred thousand men. But these were true men. The reality is that even the women of that day were equivalent to a thousand Muslims of today. And this is no exaggeration. In this battle there was a woman called Khansa. And Khansa, before embracing Islam, she had a brother called Sakhr. And Sakhr passed away. And Khansa was, she was a poet. <coughs> and she would remember her brother in poetry. She so would say, Wallahi la'am la'anna dunya bukaan wa'awilan yudhakkiruni thuru'u shamsi sakhran wa'adhkurhu bi kulli ghurubi shams. 
ولولا كثرة الباكين حولي على إخوانهم لقتلت نفسي. She will say that I swear by Allah I will serve, I will fill the dunya with my crying and my wailing. For when the sun rises, I remember my brother Sakh. And when it sets, I remember Sakh. And if it was not for the fact that there are many others around me crying over their loved ones, I would have killed myself. And then the same Khansa, she embraced Islam and she sat at the feet of the Prophet and the same Khansa on the Battle of Qadzia, this is known as the Battle of Qadzia, she had four sons who were at the prime of their youth. And she called her sons and she said, Oh my children, tomorrow you go in the battlefield. And when you go in the battlefield, wear your coffins, wear your shrouds, for I don't want you to come back. And every single one of them went into the battlefield and every single one of them were martyred. And when she was told, she said, Alhamdulillah, She said, Oh, praise be to Allah who honored me with their deaths. And upon the fifth day, Rustam was killed and the Persian began to flee and the Muslim began to follow the Persians. And it was at this battle that the prophecy of the Prophet وسلم, which the Prophet gave many years before came to pass. Upon the battle of Khandaq, the battle of the trenches, the Muslims were trying to dig a trench and they came past the huge rock and the Sahaba went to the Prophet وسلم, and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, there is a huge rock and we cannot break it. And the Prophet ﷺ came and he struck it and there was a huge spark. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Akbar and the third of it broke. And then he struck it for the second time and there was a huge spark and another third broke. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Akbar. And then he struck it for the third time and it broke into pieces. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Akbar. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhu said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we saw you do a thing today that we've never seen you do before. And the Prophet sallallahu said, when I struck it for the first time, Allah showed me that a day would come that we would take the palaces of the Romans. And when I struck it the second time, Allah showed me that a day would come that we would take the palaces of Yemen. And when I struck it the third time, Allah showed me that a day would come that we would take the palace, the white palace of the Persians. And after this battle, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu, he walked him to the white palace and he remembered the prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu And he walked in barefooted and he gave the adhan. And the Zoroastrians had a fire which was on for 1200 years. It was lit for 1200 years because they worshipped fire. And as Saad ibn Abi Waqas he gave the adhan. And when he began to give the adhan, the fire went out. Why? Because Allah says, Ja al haq wa zahaq al batil, inna al batil kana zahuka. When the truth comes, falsehood vanishes. And the nature of falsehood is that it always perishes. And this is why upon this ayah, Mufti Shafi Rahmatullah Alay mentions that the nature of Haq is that it always goes up and the nature of Batil is that it always goes down, it is always subdued and if you ever see Batil going up and Haq being subdued then know that the people of Batil have some characteristics of Haq in them they have some characteristics of Haq in them and the P and if you see a Haq being subdued the people of Haq, then know that they are a group of people. They may have Iman, but they have characteristics of Batil in them. And how often do you see this? How often do you see non-Muslims? They don't have Iman, but when it comes to character, when it comes to Adab and Akhlaq, they are much more than the Muslims do. And therefore, if Batil is high and Haq is subdued, then know that the people of Haq, the people of Haq have lost some of their truth, some of their teachings. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu, he walked into the white palace, he gave the adhan, and then he saw all the jewelry of the Kisra. 
and he sent the jewelry back to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu.